Hey guys, welcome back to RBR, and I'm excited to finally show you a GLE 53 that we can actually drive. Finally, we get a chance to drive the GLE 53 today. We aren't going to be focusing on the snow driving as much, don't worry. It's going to be actual normal road driving. And we've covered this car a number of times now, but I want to give you a quick overview yet again of the new GLE AMG family, just so you know what there was in the past and what we're dealing with today. So the previous car to this car was, of course, the GLE 43. That had that V6 engine with 367 brake horsepower, 520 newton meters of torque and a zero to 60 of 5.7 seconds and styling wise didn't really differentiate itself from a standard GLE at that time then of course we had the hotter GLE 63 of that time with 585 brake horsepower more distinctive design and that awesome awesome 5.5 litre V8 engine today's car that we're looking at that's not the case with it this is much more in its aesthetics looking like a full-on 63 AMG now, to understand just how much better this 53 is versus the 43, let's go back to the 43 for a second. Now, the issue with this car is it was a bit of a half-assed attempt of making a GLE AMG. You had anti-roll stabilization via a hydraulic system, which was just too slow to manage a car of that weight. The horsepower at 367 just wasn't enough for a car of that size, as proved by the 0-60 to 60 time as well. And generally, all the styling inside and out, the steering of the car, Nothing gave it that real feel of an AMG that you're looking for. Whereas today's car, the GLE 53, has been touched in every single area by AMG to make it much more of a genuine AMG. But it's not just the styling. Of course, the styling takes massive cues. But let's look at the technical data of this car. So the previous one, 367 brake, right? This one's got 435 plus the 520 Newton meters. Zero to 60 is down to five seconds compared to the last one, but it doesn't end there. You also get an EQ boost because this is a part AMG hybrid. So you get an extra 21 brake horsepower and an extra 250 Newton meters on top. Plus having that electric starter alternator gives you an EV like response from low revs, but it's not just the engine. The suspension has been tinkered with as well. This car has got AMG active ride control suspension, which now uses an electronic system of anti-roll stabilization, which does it in milliseconds. This is both on the front and the rear axle, and it should make this car much more dynamic than the previous car. This comes within the new AMG Dynamic Plus package, where you also get the red calipers. You get a dynamic, a steering wheel inside, and the AMG control switches as well. So it's well worth getting that package in the 53. So suspension has also been changed, but this car also has the AMG Performance exhaust system and that sounds like this. So pretty awesome sounding for a 53. Unlike the previous car, the 53 also has Formatic Plus, which means completely variable torque distribution between the front and the rear. A lot has been made about the styling of the 53. Of course, you've got the grill. Of course, the front mouth looks very 63. You can even get the 63 wheels, as we said, dynamic plus package, get to the red calipers as well. And the two round pipes on the rear look absolutely brilliant. Now, the GLE story, of course, doesn't end here. We've rendered in the past the GLE 63S. Now, of course, it's been unveiled. And this features, as we guessed, the four liter V8 from the E63S. But this comes now with EQ boost, just like the 53. So you get an additional 22 brake horsepower, 250 Newton meters of torque on top of the 612 brake horsepower and 850 Newton meters. Zero to 60 is 3.8 seconds in the S model. The S model also gets active engine mounts to deal with the main weight of the car and give it more rigidity. And we've also got an electronic diff on the rear axle in the S model as well. So that really brings the V8 to a completely different level versus the 53, but... The 53 is still so much more of an AMG compared to the previous 43. And you're going to see just how much of an AMG it is when we now drive it in anger here in Austria. So let's now the first thing you want in any AMG is a nice startup when you start the car. And the newer cars have something called AMG Emotion Start. I explain in every video and I intend to continue doing so because no one else does. All you have to do is after you press the start button, 
hold one of the paddles and keep holding it until the car starts and you get bit at a bit more of an emotional startup. And there you go, you actually get a few pops and bangs out of a 53, which is nice. Now, we're gonna use the AMG dynamic switches, put the car straight into Sport Plus and start this road test. Immediately, listen to that. Tunnel. Ooh. We've got some pops and bangs coming from this car. Now immediately I can feel the assistance, especially in the lower revs of the hybrid element of this car. Essentially it helps get the car moving and give you power before the traditional combustion engine spools up. It's a very clever way of giving you instant power. Look how this car is handling for such a big car. I want to start straight with exhaust, because you can hear it popping and banging away back there. And it's playing an almost identical sound to my GT63S, which I think is the best car that AMG sell at the moment. And it's so nice to have a car that actually sounds like an AMG. We did drive the GLB35 recently, that is a review that you're going to see very, very soon. And we were left cold and disappointed a bit by the soundtrack. So it's really great to see. Oh, 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 oh. listen to it. So it's really great to see an AMG again in the modern era where you can play the exhaust like that. Listen to it. it sounds brilliant. Now, of course, the GLE 53 has an AMG performance exhaust system with a flap. So when you press the exhaust button, you hear a vocal tone change in the exhaust, just like you do in something like an E63S. And it's not necessarily driving like a lunatic either. I mean, 4,000 revs coming off the throttle without jerking your passengers too much. This is the pull of an AMG in the modern era. Nice sound on upshift as well decent rev build up it's certainly deeper than the 35s and not as deep as the v8s i think that's kind of what you expect but it's really pleasing and it's nice to do it again and again look that, that's half the battle won for me in a modern amg now let's talk about the dynamics of the car as well because as we said compared to the 43 they really upped the game in the 53 amgs now we've got the variable ratio steering rack find in many modern AMGs. It's good, it's not GLC 63 good, but for a car this size, you get decent enough feedback from it. But again, I keep coming back to one thing, you compare it to the previous generation car, and it's chalk and cheese. This really does drive and feel like an AMG, and I think the active ride control is that one option that you really need in this car to differentiate it from a standard GLE and make it feel like an AMG some nice windy roads here and you can really see the AMG active ride control coming in I mean look at how the car is stabilizing the roll and then when you pick up speed you kind of you get confidence you know which you never ever got anything like in the 43 version of the car and essentially the feel at the end of it is that you're driving an AMG and I think that's what you really look for when it comes to driving dynamics. You need to have the confidence of decent steering, lack of body roll in an SUV, and having some good fun on a road like this. Then of course you've got the other side of it, you've got the Mercedes-Benz element. Throw it into comfort with the exhaust off. And the beauty about AMG active ride control is it's not just about sportiness, it's about catering for that comfort and Mercedes-Benz side of it. And then you just potter along as if you're just sitting in a normal diesel GLE. The suspension is brilliantly supple. Of course, you've got a whole host of new technology like the latest Mercedes-Benz UX with Hey Mercedes. How may I help you? Take me to the nearest McDonald's. Here is what I found. Where do you want to go? And boom, the fish fillet sorted for the day. And it's that kind of thing. It's the ease of use of MBUX that really makes it brilliant. You've seen a lot of other manufacturers try this and not as successful with it, the beauty of MBUX, it's just really simple. Now I really must mention how much I enjoy this engine out of the 53 cars. Now I really like the V6 in the 43s because of the sound, but the way that this brings together combustion and EQ 
just brings it such a stage higher and you kind of don't miss the V8 once you're going. Although the problem now, we talk about power. Yes, it's got 435, yes, you get an extra 21, but the 060 of five seconds, although so much better than the 5.7 of the 43, it just feels a bit laggy in today's age. Um, Suffice to say, it's more than enough for kind of daily driving, but sometimes you feel you need a bit more oomph and that's then where the 63 comes in. So for those of you saying, well, why do you need a 63 when the 53 looks so good and sounds so decent? Well, you really do because that car is gonna be much, much more powerful than this. At the end again, look, that being said about power, where this is placed in the market, kind of its price range, and versus the previous car, you know, the power is exactly where it should be. It's just that when you look at it and it looks so good and it handles so well, you kind of want to go a little bit faster. So if you're looking for a midpoint AMG with real comfort and the highest tech that you can get in any Mercedes-Benz, then the GLE 53 is really the one to go for. I must also mention that although the 63 exists, you can only get the seven seat option in the SUV in this 53, again, making it more compelling in that sense. So you've got the combination of nice AMG sounds, proper AMG aesthetic, handling that again reminds you of driving an AMG car. Everything not quite up to the level of the flagships, but that's of course because it's an entry level version. To be honest, it's probably one of my favorite modern AMGs that I've driven. It's got the sound, it's got the comfort aspect that you would expect from a Mercedes Benz, but it's got all those bits that we love about AMG. Good handling, a nice soundtrack with the performance exhaust system, an engine that just delivers every time it's called upon. So guys, I'm sure you can tell I've had immense fun in this GLE 53. I'm a little bit quiet sometimes when a car doesn't quite please me as much, but this has been really good for a modern AMG. Oh, I love the sound. So guys, if you enjoyed that video, please do like, subscribe and share it. I'm gonna make a bit more noise on these Austrian roads. Enjoy the GLE 53 a bit more. See you next time.